Rose. Uh, this is sort of shocking. Like you've got to recreate the tip. I've tried this time now, and every yeah. time it's different. And you watch out when you it's a strange obsession that I'm pursuing. I don't know what that is. Like. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of a thing, this is very obscure, but it's called the Beaver tri Trilogy. Uh, it's just a strange trilogy of films made by this guy. Sean Penn is in it. Um, it's a very, this is a crazy, very, uh, uh, like, uh, obscure reference, but it's a guy who remakes the same documentary over and over in his life at different times, and he managed to reshoot it with different people at different points in his life. At one point, he recast the person that was the main figure of the documentary as Crispin Glover, and then he recast him as Sean Penn. And there's this great, and, and, but he just kept making the same thing. And then you go, why do you keep doing that? And that's what I'm doing. Yeah, I, it's, it becomes and it changes and it's just, I don't, I, I know I have more tricks, but I am serviceably a one-trick pony in a sense. And that's cool. Well, what can we expect to see that you can tease with us? Oh, um, more world. We get to do more uh, world building. And where the first season was very, uh, oh, okay, you killed my father. It was built around very conventional hero uh, hero journey dynamics with, uh, uh, with that consciously in mind. So it was very binary, where this is more omnivorous. Like, so uh, our version of the superhero homeland security kind of uh, sort of taking notes from a very popular uh, superhero universe that we might know of, but like we have our version of like... Uh, the government shows up, and that's called Aegis, and uh, that's really, really fun. We have lots of new characters showing up, and we actually now get to slow. It both speeds up and slows down. We get to do more of them just standing in bank teller lines. They, they're just filling out forms a lot of the time. They're just trying to get by. There's a lot of paperwork. There's a lot of like uh, attempts to just make life happen. And so it's, a, it's closer even still to this idea of the forces that get in the way of the romantic vision of heroism or this idea of those sort of operatic themes. The second season, I have to say, and we didn't expect this, is weirdly prescient in terms of some of the themes that we've been like grappling with societally. Uh, just, uh, there are things that happen in the story that we didn't really expect to be as sort of oddly like a looking glass sort of uh, version of events of the day. And that's just odd. But that sort of happened last season too, in a sense, because for, my, for me, the terror was essentially like a, like a, like a ideologically empty uh, agent of mischief that uh, created a giant, lumbering, naked white male. <laughs> That started to just stumble around the, the world and just crush it and like uh, didn't know where it was from or have no sense of self or memory or history. Um, that was sort of like just in, like yeah, man manhood was very much a discussion last season. Uh, less so this season, uh, but more society. You know, so it's a very. This is an ensemble, and that's cool because it just allows uh, all of the different little. Uh, we get a lot of different little viewpoints by making the characters carry more time and more story. You get a, 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 more of a smorgasbord. I said it right, I think. But I mean, you're getting you're getting representation, you're getting diversity, you know, and, and not in you know the you know bullshit way. Like you're actually showing these characters and their backstory and their yep. you know their journey. Yes. You know, yeah. And they're becoming heroes. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's so rare to see that. I'm uh, I'm really glad we were there because it's. Uh, there's no other place to be now, you know, and in fact, Dot's journey is very much a very interesting meta-textual journey of the tertiary female character becoming not a tertiary female character, you know, and that was something we very consciously have had to do because everything built into the previous versions of those genre tropes wants it to conform back to this, like, 
you don't know how much you're just actually engineering away from those goals by just making other decisions unconsciously. So it has to remain a conscious uh, uh, sort of uh, goal. And like Dot, uh, sorry, she's so real. Val Curry was really important in that too, uh, collaborating and building that sort of course, you know. Yeah, so she didn't cool. mention, like, this year she's just, like, pissed off and, like, doesn't want to be responsible for anyone. And yeah. Like, I think all women are feeling that right think, now. I uh, think that, so, that fits in, right? You nailed it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> didn't know how sort of uh, prescient we were. Yeah, and she really does, I think. What I like about Dot is she's twisted. She's actually not just okay, you know? She's, uh, she's not any more sort of broken than anyone else, but she's not just a caregiver that has no flaw. Um, that was one of the sort of calculations that had to be really understood from the first season forward. We understood it, but it was like, it's uh, those things have to be kind of consciously understood because we have to wake up collectively from uh, uh, just a, a previous era of programming that really is there. Right? Like it's invisibly the patriarchy, long skinny fingers sticking in all kinds of places. And it hurts everybody, you know. Yeah. So we really need to see other things. The jailer and the jail. Everyone's in prison. I know. No. Thanks. I'm just happy anyone's paying any attention to anything. I love your work.